Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, one and all. It might like to welcome you back here again today for the service of Holy Communion on the second Sunday of Easter. I'm going to ask the congregation here, how are your voices today? <laughs> Lots of us gathered here yesterday afternoon for some lovely time of singing. We had the organ over here going full tilt with Colin Nicholson. And uh, it was a lovely afternoon of praise and worship. And uh, thank you to everyone who helped to organize it. And uh, it was just a very special occasion and lots of people came. And uh, I heard this morning that we raised over 800 euro as well, which we didn't ask for. People just very kindly gave it uh, as a gift and donation. So uh, it was terrific. So uh, if my, my voice is a little bit weak this morning, you'll understand after all that singing yesterday, uh, it really was a very special occasion. Well, our first hymn this morning is all about following the theme of Easter. Alleluia, alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raise. Alleluia, alleluia. So we, we remember that we bring our hearts before God and God knows our hearts. So we just pray for God's cleansing, God's purity for our hearts in the words of this prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, and shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 
This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the laws and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us. Write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us therefore now confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Please be seated on you. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. O oh God, who heard these words of our confession, may we in turn hear your words, your words of compassion, because you love us, you always have and you always will. And you forgive us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as forgiven children, we stand and say, Glory to God in the house, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A special prayer for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'd like to be seated as Michael comes to read our Bible reading this morning. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 1, beginning to read from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And to inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfailing, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, through perishable, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the, the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Michael. And the theme of our service today is all about the joy of believing. Believing in Jesus, believing in his resurrection. And if I just go back to that line there, it says, even though you have not seen Jesus, you love him. Uh, even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice 
with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. There is a real joy to be found in believing in Jesus, and especially in his resurrection. And our gospel reading today is all about Thomas. And of course, we have that phrase, uh, 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 what type of Thomas? Uh, doubting. A doubting Thomas, which is so unfair. The poor man, yes, he doubted Jesus for a while, but he went on to lead not just a few people, even a whole nation. The Indian nation was really majorly affected by his witness. So I think it's unfair that we should call him doubting Thomas or, or anyone else for that matter, because he went on to believe. And that's always possible, you know. You can doubt God for a few years, most of your life even, but there can come a point of time where it's like, wow, this is real, this is true, and it's kind of like it opens up a whole new vista to you, just like it did for Thomas, and it is an indescribable and glorious joy that accompanies believing in God. Well, last Sunday, as we know, was Easter Sunday, and I showed you a little cartoon version of the resurrection of Jesus, and today we've got the cartoon version of the story of Thomas. So are you ready for this? I hope so. Let me hope our, our sound levels are okay as we click on. The story of the Bible. Jesus appears to Thomas. This is Jesus. Hey -oh! who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing. in cartoon form but I will ask you to stand as we read it directly from the Bible the Holy Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to John chapter 20 beginning at verse 19 glory to you Lord Jesus Christ when it was evening on that day the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. 
Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and come and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And Father God, just as Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit upon his disciples, we pray, Holy Spirit, be breathed upon us afresh today. May we take in the sheer joy of all it is that we have through our faith in Jesus. For we pray this in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And if you were in church last Sunday, I had come up with this uh, little uh, response, I suppose we could call it. And if you were there, you'll know what it's all about. But if you would reply with the words that are in the highlighted yellow, so I would say, Jesus Christ died. Jesus Christ was buried. Jesus Christ rose again. This is life forevermore. Amen. And this is such an important part of our Christian faith, the, the physical life of Jesus, but that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. It's central to our creeds and all its... It's so, so important. If you look through the New Testament, uh, all that Paul had written about the resurrection, he said it's just so essential to our Christian faith that Jesus died, that he was buried, but that he rose again. Why? Because it brings great joy to a planet where there are lots of things that do not bring us so much joy. The joy of believing. Believing in Jesus. I wonder, do you and I know it? And, and can we know it even more, even today? Can we know that joy even more? I think uh, poor Thomas was feeling quite sorry for himself. And uh, that cartoon version perhaps helped to bring it to life for us. But he may have been feeling sorry, but he kind of isolated himself as well, hadn't he? He sort of stepped away from the other disciples. And he was trying to work out for himself what he really thought and believed of God. And if we go back through the Bible, we'll see little bits of snippets of the sort of person that Thomas was. But let's not forget, though, that the book that we've read from, John, was written so that we may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing we may have life in his name. So believing is so central to the theme of the Gospel of John that in a sense Thomas kind of epitomizes that turning point where people have gone the journey, they've sort of come along the journey with Jesus. But there comes a point where they have to work it out for themselves. What do they really believe? What do you 
really believe? And those who are with us online today, what is it do you really believe about Jesus? And can we know that joy? Well, the journey of Thomas, if we go back a bit, well, we must remember that he was one of the chosen 12 and that he journeyed with Jesus for at least three years that we know about. He was always the kind of realist guy. And I say this for a reason because it kind of comes out in the sort of things that he says. Um, Jesus, if you read John chapter 14, Jesus is, is, I'm going to say the word pontificating in, a, in hopefully not a derogatory way, but it was like Jesus was giving a whole lot of theology about who he was and where he was going and what he was doing. And you can almost see Thomas in the background scratching his head and trying to, what is Jesus talking about? And so he came up with this lovely question, Lord, and, and this is when Jesus is saying that he was going to leave them. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And he was probably speaking for just about all the other disciples at the same time. So he had that kind of realistic edge. He was trying to bring Jesus back down to earth, as it were, and say, what do you really, really mean? And yet Jesus answered him with a wonderful, uh, well-quoted phrase from the Bible. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so even Thomas's questions were being used as a way of helping us to understand who Jesus is really, really is, and that he is the way in truth to life in all its fullness. Two weeks ago, we read the account of the raising of Lazarus, and we know that Thomas was there, because from John 11, verse 16, when John, Thomas heard that they were going to go back up towards Bethany and to Jerusalem, he said to the rest of his disciples, Let's, let us also go that we may die with Jesus because he knew it was dangerous going back into that place but again he was kind of calling it out nobody had the sort of uh, they were all timid and saying oh gosh we, he's going back up there the authorities will hear about it we'll all be in trouble Thomas just spoke it out and said it as it was we're going to die if we go up there nonetheless he did follow with Jesus and I think it's incredible to remember that he saw the miracle of resurrection he saw Lazarus being raised from the dead, and yet he couldn't believe in the raising of Jesus. I think that's quite interesting because it shows us the honest struggle that Thomas had with resurrection, as it were, that he just he couldn't get his mind around it. Yes, he saw the raising of Lazarus. He knew it was possible, but he had seen the death that Jesus had died. He'd seen the flogging. He'd seen the crucifixion. He'd seen the ugliness of, of death and, and just how the authorities and everything had turned against Jesus. He knew he had died. And that was a kind of a, an end of moment. It, it just, he couldn't get over that. He couldn't see beyond what had happened to Jesus. And so we join him in that kind of sullen mood when the other disciples went to tell him that they had seen Jesus. And his response is, well, I need some evidence. I need to know that he really is alive. And I think that's kind of fair enough too, because let's remember, these guys were in such a roller coaster of high emotions, low emotions. And there's only so much of that you can take where you sort of say, enough, I've had enough. I just need a break, give me a break here. And, and his break was, I must see, I must touch. Jesus' hands, I must touch his side. Anything else, I just can't believe. And then we know the graciousness of Jesus because, yeah, he came to that to believe or not to believe question. But then Jesus did appear to him. And I'm going to link in with that Bible reading that Michael read to us earlier. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Those of you who have attended services, funeral services within the Church of Ireland would know we quote this at every funeral service. But it's a sign of hope. 
It's a sign of the wonder of what God has done through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Those, when we're hearing it read at a funeral, I wonder, does it, do we have that sense of understanding of, of what it is that God has done for us? Well, taking us back to poor Thomas, was he missing out on the joy of believing? And even when he came to Jesus, you could almost well, the cartoonist sort of gives him a sorrowful looking face. But then he moves into this sort of, wow, I get to see Jesus. I get to see his hands. I get to see his side. And his whole life is completely transformed. That moment that I said at the start, we can all have it. We could even have it a few times in our lives. So we, we can sort of go through ups and downs of faith in our Christian journey. But when we move into that place of faith, I might suggest to you that we're on the up again. Because there is a joy that comes through believing in Jesus. That even when death comes, we know it is not the end. There's hope beyond the grave and Jesus has made this so apparent by his resurrection that there definitely is life after death. And so I ask you to repeat with me, Jesus Christ died. Jesus Christ rose again. This is our faith that we've come to believe, that the whole purpose of John's gospel indicates that we may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in his name, that we may have life. Going back to that passage from Peter, an indescribable and glorious joy. Is that what you and I know in our hearts today? Yes, there are times of great sorrow. Indeed, we've seen some tragic road accidents this week. I'm thinking of that uh, poor fella. Um, oh, I forgot. Craig Breen, the motorist, uh, who's from Waterford. But he was actually here at the Clonakilty rally uh, just uh, a few weeks ago, just on the St. Patrick's weekend. I actually got to share a podium with him. He was standing beside me in the podium, and uh, he died in, in an accident, motorsport accident this week thinking of him and his family. Uh, we think of those little uh, teenagers, very young teenagers, who were killed so tragically up at Hedford as well. Uh, and they're only 13 and 14, and two of them are still fighting for their lives. There are tragic things which happen in our world, which we, let's be honest, we cannot fully understand. We know that death is such a real part of this world that we live in. Yet, we as Christians believe in a joy that we can know now that will help us to face even death itself. And so I finish with this slide here. Try not to miss out on the joy of believing in Jesus and celebrating in his triumph over even death itself. That in the face of tragedy and loss in this world, yet we know a faith that triumphs. I hope it's your faith. I trust it's my faith and that we're growing in that faith every day. Let's bow our heads in prayer for a moment. Lord, we know it can be hard to believe in you at times. We know just as Thomas struggled that we too can struggle. Thomas got to see you face to face. One day we know we shall see you face to face too. But until then, please strengthen our faith in you. Help us to know afresh the joy of believing in you. And that even in the face of the struggles of this life, that your indescribable and glorious joy 
will guard us and guide us each day. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And I thought as a way of responding to my simple message today is to use the words of this hymn, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering son. If you can't see the words on the screen, it's hymn 288. Let's stand as we sing this together. Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And for our intercessions and prayers this morning, we use the response that's based from Mark chapter 9 and verse 24, where it says, We believe you, Jesus. Help our unbelief. If you'd like to be seated on me. And God, we do bring to you our broken world. We think of the people of Sudan, the riots and the wars, the trouble that's been breaking out there. We think of Ukraine, we think of Yemen, we think of other troubled parts of this world where it seems there is violence and want and needless death. In the face of the darkness, Jesus, be our light. We use the response, we believe you, Jesus. Yes. We pray for the church, we pray for Paul, our bishop. We pray in our diocesan cycle of prayer for the Ross Union and for Dean Cliff Jeffers and his wife Eunice and his family. We pray for all those who work within that union, that you'd help them to be guided by your Holy Spirit. We pray for our diocesan youth worker, uh, that's Hilda Connolly. We pray also for the diocesan uh, assistant, Denise Strobart. And Lord, if we also pray for our neighboring parishes of the Fan Labas Union, we pray for the appointment of a new leader and rector there very soon. Lord, even when it seems you are not present with us, we pray that you would give us the faith to believe. And so we pray, we believe you, Jesus. We pray for our country, for our government and all those in authority. We pray, Lord, that you would help the health service to be able to cope with the vast numbers that are coming for help each day with over 500 people on temporary hospital beds. We pray that you'd be able to prioritize the needs of our country. We pray that especially, too, for the housing crisis. Please give our leaders great wisdom as to how to meet these challenges of our day. And sometimes it can be hard to believe in democracy and in our government. But we pray that you would give us faith in our leaders too. For our leaders are put in authority under your authority, O oh God. And so we pray we believe you, Jesus. Amen. Pray for those families whose lives have been visited by tragedy, the family and friends of Craig Breen. We also pray for the families of those teenagers affected, for Lucas Joyce and Kirsty Bowen, who were both buried yesterday and the day before. We pray for their heartbroken families. We pray for the speedy recovery of the two other teenagers who were involved in that road accident at Hedford. In the face of tragedy, we pray that you give us faith. We believe you, Jesus. We take a few moments in silence to lift to God any who are on our hearts to pray for today. Comfort the bereaved. Give strength to those who need it. Healing and hope to those who look to you. We believe you, Jesus. Amen. 
So we join our prayers together by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We prepare for communion, so we pray we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. When Jesus came to be with his disciples, he said to them, Peace be with you. Let's stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Feel free to turn to those around you and wish them the peace of the Lord. As we come to Holy Communion, we remind ourselves that the Lord is here. Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Spirit and Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying to destroy our death. Rising and restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy make us in the one of the one of Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless Trinity with your whole church throughout the world. We offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen, 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 amen. amen. And the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We be in one body, for we, we all share, share in one, one bread. bread. Just to remind you that the bread we use is gluten-free 
And you're very welcome to receive from the table here. It's open to all Christians of all denominations are welcome to receive from this table. And if you wish, uh, I'd come down to you after the main distribution if you feel the steps are a bit hard to negotiate here. And if you prefer not to take the wine, that's quite okay. You can just turn away uh, and go back to your seat at that point. But do draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that Jesus died for you and lives for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I'd like to be seated now.
God, our Father, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life, and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin, and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we pray together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And just a few announcements to run past you, those of us who are... The those of us who are a bit younger uh, are welcome to go to the youth group tonight. <laughs> I know that's pushing. But for me, I have to be there anyway. But still, I might kick a ball around. There's indoor soccer, there's frisbee, there's basketball. It's happening tonight down in the Clonakilty Community Hall, which is right beside uh, CCC, the, the college. And uh, you're very welcome to join in. If you've never been, that's no problem. Go along. Secondary school age folk, that's basically the age group we're talking about. Uh, so if you're in secondary school, you're entitled to go. So that's between 7 and 8.30 tonight. Tomorrow morning, Little Treasures, our parent and toddler group meets in the hall as usual from 10 through to 11.30 as it does each week during the school term time. I'm looking forward to seeing them all back again. We have our AGM for our churches, our church union. It's called our Easter General Vestry Meeting. That's happening this Tuesday evening. It's open to everyone to come. Please do come if you're free at all. Please, we would love to see you there at 8.30 in the parochial hall this Tuesday evening. And hopefully I'll see you there. And I'll put up a few slides of all that we've been doing over the last year. It's a kind of way of looking back as well as looking forward. So please do come along to that. Then on Wednesday evening, the Mother's Union are meeting in the parochial hall for the theme of creative writing. So if you ever thought you might like to find out more about that and maybe practice a little bit, the Mother's Union, Wednesday night, 8.30 in the parochial hall. Services next Sunday, we're back here at the earlier time of 9 o'clock in the morning for morning prayer, 10 o'clock in All Saints Kilmaluda for a service of Holy Communion, or 11.30 in Kilgariff Church in Clonakilty. And just to remind you that you can contribute to the work of the church here online through the portal at the top of our Facebook page or through our website as well. Those possibilities are there. The blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God, the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Christian faith. Amen. Amen. And God, the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And the joy of believing being our theme, I thought we might finish by just singing the final verse of that great hymn that we sing already today, <coughs> Thine be the glory. Let's stand as we sing. No glory now. Service, Shahurt and Tirna, in Anna Priest. Amen. Amen.